वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला सब्जेक्ट सोशल मेडिसिन एंड कम्युनिटी हेल्थ दिस द मेन पेपर इज द नेशनल हेल्थ प्रोग्राम्स एंड पॉलिसीज विच वी आर डिस्कसिंग एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस नेशनल प्रोग्राम ऑन ऑक्यूपेशनल डिजीजेस द डिवेलपमेंट टीम हेडेड बाय प्रिंसिपल इन्वेस्टिगेटर प्रोफेसर सी पी मिश्रा फ्रॉम आई एम एस बी एच यू डॉक्टर तनेजा डॉक्टर मस्ती Dr. Banerjee, now what are the learning objectives? Before we go into any program, we must know what are the learning objectives, because that is how we describe what the procedure is. Now, first of all, we must learn to describe the burden of the occupational diseases. Whatever subject we are discussing, we have to know first of all what the total burden is. In in other words, how many cases are there which we will have to deal with, either. actively or in the background then second to explain the common occupational diseases in india to, to, to describe the national program of occupational diseases now what constitutes an occupational disease we are in everybody is in some occupation or the other no matter how small or big it is it could be an electronic industry it could be an it could be an iron industry or it could be a cotton industry but and as a result of these working in such places and being exposed to the risk factors arising from the work it is necessary to know what could be the occupational diseases which could be contracted as a result of work exposure recognition of the occupational origin of the disease at the individual level requires the establishment of a causal relationship between the disease and the exposure of the worker to certain hazardous agents at the workplace this relationship is normally established on the basis of clinical and pathological data occupational history anamnesis job analysis identification evaluation of occupational hazards as well as exposure verification and when the disease is clinically recognized we have to find a causal link which is established between the disease when the disease is recognized as an occupational disease and now this is very important like i said previously wherever you are working at a regular place first of all we must know what type of work can, is constituted as in in that particular place for that occupation now at that level it could be what are the influences what does that individual have to face through in the 24 hours or in the 8 hour or in the 10 hour level at which he is working it could be physical it could be something in the atmosphere and it could be something which is related to the food industry in any case we have to find whether the place is safe and the occupation is safe for the person to work in and uh, it is important to know because if a person works happily safely comfortably in a place then there would be no loss of work as well as of the economy of the country now occupational diseases cause actually huge suffering and loss in the world of work not only that it this also causes a very big personal loss in the individual himself and it leads finally into the family because if he is handicapped say he is working in a machinery and he gets a handicap or he is injured now that means he will be laid off work he will be sitting at home it is possible that the pay would be cut and therefore the family would be to suffer yet occupational or work related diseases remain largely invisibly invisible so as such it becomes even more important that both the employee and the employer must be absolutely alert as to what could the dangers be it be both visible as well as invisible at the place of work now the nature of the occupational diseases is altering rapidly it could be technological and social changes along with the global economic conditions they are actually aggravating existing health hazards and creating new ones well known occupational diseases such as pneumoconiosis remain widespread while relatively new occupational diseases such as mental and musculoskeletal disorders are on the rise now what is the burden of the occupational disease before we go actually into what happens to the individual 
while he is at work. It is important to know what the burden is on the country. Now annually it has been uh, recorded and seen that annually occupational accidents and work related diseases may cause over 2.3 million fatalities out of which 350,000 are caused by occupational accidents and close to 2 million by work related diseases. Approximately 6,300 people die every day due to these causes. Occupational accidents kill nearly 1,000 people every day and work related diseases provoke the death of approximately 5,400 more individuals. Now these work related diseases could take some time to kill the person. But in any case, whose is the loss? The loss is for the family and the family members. Every 15 seconds, a worker dies from a work-related accident or disease. Every 15 seconds, 153 workers have a work-related accident. There were also 313 million non-fatal occupational accidents requiring at least four days of absence from work in 2010. Now this is another problem which needs caring because even if it is a minor accident or it is a mi minor accident which occurs during the work in, at the workplace, he is going to take off and as such for those four, four days or five days or six days, whatever he takes leave, this is actually a economic loss to the country as well as to the firm as well as to the individual concerned. Now the suffering caused by such accidents and illnesses to workers and their families is absolutely incalculable. In economic terms, the Indian Labour, the International Labour Organization has estimated that more than 4% of the world's annual GDP gross domestic product is lost as a consequence of occupational accidents and diseases. Now, the ILO also aims to create worldwide awareness of dimensions and consequences of work-related accidents, injuries and diseases. Now, below you can actually see very nice pictures of uh, the lung. Now, we were talking about pneumoconiosis and pneumoconiosis is what? Pneumoconiosis from the factories which cause uh, fine, minute particles to be ingested, to be actually breathed in by the individuals concerned cause and causing these particles to settle in the lungs as minor dust and soon with effective working for over a long time, the healthy lung soon turns into a sick lung and now you can see the picture of the lung suffering from pneumoconiosis. Now what happens in pneumoconiosis? Because it is not only that the lung becomes, I mean, deshaped and it becomes decolored, but as a result, the breathing capacity of the individual lessens, he starts to feel dyspneic, he feels tired, and as a result, his, the entire effect goes on his work. Now, uh, this is important because again, this is going to economically affect the, both the individual, the um, uh, workplace, uh, and the country. Now fatal accidents and diseases uh, in 2011 were estimated to be about 14 percent and uh, fatal diseases 86 percent. Whether it is a fatal accident or a fatal disease, it is definitely going to be a burden both on the um, uh, company, on the nation as well as on the individual. About injuries, occupational disease injuries, it's also estimated that in India, 17 million occupational non-fatal injuries, that is 17% of the world and 45,000 fatal injuries, that is 45% of the total deaths due to the occupational injuries in the world occur every year, which is a very big figure. And uh, out of this arise questions, what is again, what has the care which must be instituted in every factory, in every workplace. And before you go into this, definitely every workplace, every factory will have to be studied in order to find out which are the pitfalls in that particular work-related injuries. Out of 11 million cases of occupational diseases in the world, 
1.9 million cases, that is 17 percent, are contributed by India, and out of point and out of 0 0.7 million deaths in the world, in fact, 0.12 is contributed again by India. And uh, in India, out of a total of 1 million crore of rupees of GNP in the year 1999, occupational diseases caused a loss of nearly 7,000 crores. Now we can imagine, in order to save this money, what are the steps we will have to take to prevent uh, its loss? Now, uh, coming to, till now we have been discussing what, what is actually the data regarding the occupational diseases, the, the fatal accidents occurring in our country as vis-a-vis uh, -vis the world situation. Now, what are the major occupational illnesses in India? In India, the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, also known as the NIOSH, has developed a priority list of 10 leading work-related illnesses and injuries. Three criteria were used to develop the list. One was the frequency of occurrence of the illness and injury, its severity in the individual cases, and its potential for prevention, which is very important. These are, in fact, the three strongholds of how to approach this particular problem. Occupational lung disease is the first on the list. The prevalence of occupational asthma varies from nearly 10% to nearly all of the workers in certain high-risk occupations. And uh, NISOH op considers occupational cancer to be the second leading work-related disease, followed by the cardiovascular diseases, disorders of reproduction, neurotoxicity, noise-induced hearing loss, dermatological and psychological disorders. Now, what were the major occupational diseases actually can be divided in following ca categories for better understanding? Now, this is a very beautiful uh, chart which shows how can, what are the major, what are the influences of these major occupational diseases. Now, it could be occupational injuries, which is very sensible. Occupational lung diseases, people working in factories like uh, wood uh, manufacture where the dust flows, cottons or the coal mining industries hmm? and uh, occupation cancers. Now, uh, from any one of these, uh, if the person is di in direct contact with all these chemicals or with a regular um, physical um, irritation to the skin or any part of the skin, cancers could occur. And besides, of course, the lung cancers, then occupation, uh, occupational dermatosis. Now, this could occur, for example, in the work industry. If a person is continuously working with the hand and with the instruments, it is possible that because of certain minor injuries or irritation at the same place, dermatosis could occur, skin dermatosis could occur, and it would take a long time to heal unless protection is taken otherwise. Now, it could be occupational infections, very common. It could, be, it could be either from the dyes or if he is dealing with plants or if he is dealing in, with bacteria. For example, people, people working in the laboratories, they are likely to get these infections. Or if they are very closely knit. Now, for example, people like um, weaving, weaving industry. Now, in a small room, there is a loom at which people are working. And for every loom, this is, these are closed rooms, the air is very dense, it is very warm. Plus, there are three or four, there could be a crowd of people working, and as a result, intercurrent infections between each of these people could also occur. So, lung infections would be very common. Occupation, uh, toxicology. Now, people working with dyes, or with uh, drugs, or with plants, so, in this, uh, I, will give, I will be giving you some more examples slightly later on, but uh, this is also very important. And most of all, we should not forget occupation with mental disorders. Now, in all these places, people are, when they come to work, they are tense throughout and particularly if it is an attention grabbing work, for example, in the diamond cutting factory, where you need absolute concentration or in the agate factory, 
you need absolute concentration for working. It is these people who are in total mental stress and finally coming into mental disorders. And of course, others could be minor. Now, we have a very nice chart which shows and occupational disorders could be grouped to etiological factors also. And uh, I would like to comment on this. Now, occupational in injuries. Ergonomic related injuries means they are working, uh, could be physical injuries. Anywhere, this could happen anywhere in the wood cutting or in the road. People are making roads, they are digging. Now, they could injure themselves. So, these are all, these will all fall into these categories. Then chemical occupational factors where people have to now dust, gases, acid, alkali, fume, workers, now vapors. Now these are available in practically all the physical occupations which are there. Whether people, there are road workers, whether there are miners, whether they are working in the silicon factory or in the other factories or they are working in the tobacco factory. So dust or the liquid and the acid, alkalis, fumes, anything. Now physical occupation factors, noise, heat and cold, electromagnetic radiation. Now for electromagnetic radiation and ionizing, these will come into places where people are working constantly with x-rays. So one must has to, one has to be very careful about wearing those uh, x-ray um, indicators which show how much a person is getting radiation. Now extremes of temperature, for example, you are working in the iron uh, ore uh, manufacturing. There you have extreme heat where the iron ore is coming in and uh, if you move away from there, it could be the cold temperatures and extremes of pressure. Now biological occupation factors could be insects, moles, viruses. These would actually come into those places where people are working in the agricultural industry or one of the very famous examples that is the tobacco industry. Now tobacco, uh, a word about this. Tobacco industry is actually, it came from America, but uh, it has been found that a very good variety of tobacco is being grown in the area of Andhra Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. Now when these, uh, when the tobacco comes up and the leaves grow, the strange thing is that these leaves grow big and strong they are and they have to be picked at a time early in the morning when they are actually wet with dew. Now the strangest part is that uh, if you one has to understand that when these dew pickers if they don't take uh, care with their hands it is possible that the nicotine may be absorbed through the skin causing nicotine poisoning in these people. So therefore particular care has to be taken that their fingers are protected or they are wearing a raincoat wherein the nicotine is not absorbed through the skin. Now a newest development as far as tobacco industry has come in that is people have advised wearing nicotine patches which actually regulates the absorption of nicotine in such areas the absorption of nicotine into the skin so that it does not go above the toxic levels. Then the parasites and the protozoans, people working in laboratories or people working in uh, pathological labs. Uh, that is where these can come in or maybe parasites can also come in when you are working in the fields. So agricultural industry and of course workplace stress. When people today, high level technos are working in technical uh, places and uh, the stress is too much because there is a demand of continuous upkeep with the modern technology and pressure to submit their time, their task in taste. Now, one of the most important industries is this, is the newspaper industry where people have to run, reporters have to run to get news in time and collecting from the time of collection of news to the time when it can be relayed over the TV network or the radio network is a complete stress, uh, stressful um, activity and uh, psychosocial conditions, they come up slowly, but they are there. We cannot ignore them. Now, national occupational safety and health systems and programs. When we have talked so much about this, 
it is becomes important that we have to create a safe and a healthy working environment for all these workers at different places. So each country has to develop an effective national occupational safety and health system as a collaborative effort of the government and social partners. Such a system should consist of various elements including legislation and compliance assurance mechanisms as well as training and information network. The system needs to be continuously improved through the formulation and implementation of the national occupational safety and health programs as guided by their particular framework and recommendations which have been given. Now, uh, taking a few more examples. The National Program for Control and Treatment of Occupational Diseases, this was actually one of the main health components of the National Health Policy in 1983 and it became included in National Health Policy of 2002 because since a country was progressing, occupation, um, occupational uh, hazards were coming up with the rise in the occupational um, factories and the occupational situations. But uh, very little attention was paid to mitigate the effect of the occupational disease through the proper program. And uh, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare took, launched a scheme entitled the National Program for Control and Treatment of Occupational Diseases in 98 and 99. And uh, Ahmedabad was uh, the NIOH, Ahmedabad, uh, which is an ICMR uh, um, section, has been identified as a nodal agency for the same because they conduct researches and they conduct um, actual uh, working of the inputs and the outputs in order to be able to frame the safety rules. Now, many research projects have been proposed to initiate, uh, have been proposed uh, to be initiated by the government and uh, most important is the agate industry. Now, what is the agate industry? Agate industry is a very famous industry wherein these small stones, in fact, the uh, stones in the Khambat area of Gujarat, these stones are available in all different colors and the most important which has become a major industry today is the polishing of these agate uh, pieces so that and they are sent mostly abroad in order to be made into jewelry pieces. Now agate is also used in the precision industry for balancing because in the balancing machines agate is used um, is also used. So that has to be also and now all these have to be polished. Now uh, another small word about this before I go on to the next ones. The agate industry although it's a very flourishing industry in the Khambat area of Gujarat, uh, it, we must know that it is actually a small household industry. Many multiple household industries have come up and every single house maybe will have about five to six people working in it in small rooms polishing and absolutely no care is taken as to the difficulties or to the um, uh, which may arise as a result of these unprotected uh, industries. Now herein the other problems of women labor as well as child labor is also brought in because when one person establishes a small unit it is a whole family which joins together to form this. Now the government is taking definitely some steps to legalize and to take important protections against this uh, silicosis and tuberculosis which is uh, vastly prevalent in these areas. Occupational health programs of tobacco harvesters and their prevention. I have already mentioned a little bit earlier but uh, in Andhra Pradesh which is the biggest growing region for tobacco, uh, we have to take care right from the time when the harvesting starts because that is the time when nicotine absorption takes place or when it dries then the, the, then the smoke or, and the dust um, may affect the people. Hazardous process and so that way they could wear masks and prevention measures to keep themselves safe. Hazardous uh, processes and chemicals, database generation, documentation, all these are very necessary in order to disseminate 
information so proper protection can be taken care of. Capacity building to promote research, education, training at the NIOH and uh, health risk assessment and development of intervention programs in cottage industries with high risk of silicosis just as mentioned previously. Now prevention and control of occupational health hazards amongst salt workers in the remote districts of Gujarat and Western Rajasthan. Now this is another which is very important in the Kutch area where there are salt deserts. The salt has to be taken and uh, it has to be made, it has to be refined into the salt which we are eating, to, which we are taking in today. Plus it has to be improved with the addition of hmm, iodine. Now <clears throat> uh, we see the uh, NIOH at Ahmedabad and uh, this is a premier institute and it was, uh, it was uh, brought up under the Indian Council of Medical Research under the Development of Health Research, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and uh, this is mainly for the research in occupational health in the country. The National Institute of Occupational Health, Ahmedabad, was established by ICMR in 1966 and to cater to the local needs of the southern and the eastern regions, the institutes established two more regional centers at uh, Bangalore and Calcutta. Now the NIOH uh, has been established, uh, it was established with uh, certain main objectives and uh, mm, that is uh, to promote obviously intensive research to evaluate the environmental stresses and factors at the workplace, to promote the highest quality of occupational health through fundamental and applied research, to develop control technologies and health programs through the basic and fundamental research and to generate human resources in the field. But most of all, we have to take care that the people who work for us will be completely safe. Now the institute functions as a WHO collaborative and a reference center for the occupational health and it has represented in many important functions of the government of India, including the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Ministry of Labor, Ministry of Environment and Forests, Ministry of Agriculture to generate data and to provide guidance and recommendations on issues related to occupational and environmental health. Now when we talk of environment and forest, let us not forget the very important rubber factory. Uh, the rubber factories and as a result of the people who are actually tapping the rubber trees daily making rounds in the jungles. So they are exposed to many more factors apart from the fact that they collect uh, the rubber and they take it to make the latex. So other uh, occupational pressures also come in. And uh, most important is that uh, uh, I, uh, I would like to mention here also that uh, lung cancers, we have been talking and lung cancers have been definitely a uh, byproduct, end product of the coal industries and the miners, the wood, the wood, uh, um, uh, the wood uh, or the furniture making fa uh, factories, and the cotton industry, Maharashtra, uh, Chota Nagpur area. These are the cotton growing areas, and uh, people picking on these cottons are definitely subject to to the dust particles which come in and the cotton particles which eventually may lead to lung infections and eventually they may definitely lead to lung cancers also. Now what is the vision of these? The vision is to create a safe, safe work environment through intensive research and technology development and knowledge dissemination of quality support system in order to improve the health and well-being of the workers. Now, what is the global strategy for occupational health? This is not a problem of our country only. It is a problem of global importance. And it is not only that we are talking about our country, we are talking about the entire world wherein different types of industries are being carried out and as a result, different pictures are emerging of the occupational diseases and as such, 
the preventive measures to be taken will have to be studied and for with and uh, placed there. So we need strengthening of international and national policies for health at work and development of the policy tools, developing a healthy work environment because at some places we have seen that uh, uh, people have uh, relaxing hours or they may create a gym. Today's uh, high-tech uh, offices are creating uh, coffee places or they are creating gym places wherein for 10-20 minutes the people who are working may get out from their high pressure areas and go and work there and relax themselves both in mind or they may go into yoga. Yoga is a good uh, replacement for a healthy mind and a healthy body. Then developing healthy work practices and promoting health at work. Now this is what it means. You create an environment wherein the person will be completely relaxed, tension free and he works so that once he is tension free, he will be, the safety of his health will be at the peak. Strengthening occupational health services, establishing support services for the occupational health. Now for support services, what type? For example, if there is an occupation wherein it is possible that people uh, need uh, continuous uh, care. So they may call in a field of uh, technical experts from the nursing so that they could be examined in time and checked for uh, any problems or for early detection of uh, problems and thereby take uh, a proper stand. Then developing occupational health hazards based on scientific risk assessment developing human resources for occupational health, establishing a registration and data system, including development of information services through experts, effective transmission of data, raising public health awareness, and of course, most important, we must strengthen research and uh, develop a collaborative uh, with the occupational services. Now, what is the present scenario? Currently, the national program of occupational diseases is yet to be fully implemented through the country. And it is important to know that uh, what are still the pitfalls as far as uh, where are we with regard to this national program. Are all the programs or all the industries, have they been studied? Have all the issues been taken into consideration? And have all the proper methods been taken to prevent uh, or to, for early detection of these places. The program is not a priority for the states and does not have any separate organization, but uh, program officers at the state and district levels, hence the program lacks implementation at the grassroots level. There is need to strengthen the activities of the program at all levels by ensuring the participation of the appropriate authorities. Now, in summary, it is, uh, let us summarize. It's also estimated that in India, 17 million occupational non-fatal injuries and 45,000 fatal injuries are occurring every year. And uh, effective stand has to be taken for preventive, promotive and curative uh, services, including positive mental health and positive physical health. The Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, the Government of India has launched the National Programme for Control and Treatment of Occupational Diseases in 1998-99. The NIOH is also the nodal agency for the implementation of the programme. Occupational lung disease, occupational cancer, followed by cardiovascular diseases, disorders of reproduction, neurotoxicity, noise-induced hearing loss. Dermatological conditions and psychological disorders are the main occupational diseases. As far as cardiovascular diseases are concerned, where, wherein people are working in the offices mostly without any activity, it is possible that those people, because of the severe mental tension and the stress which they are going through, could increase the blood pressure and thereby the cardiovascular diseases. Disorders of reproduction, those people who are working in the radioactive areas or in, ex or in the ex hospitals or in the laboratories could, unless if 
proper care is taken, uh, there could be some problem as far as reproduction. Um, neurotoxicity or the noise induced hearing loss. Now people working in factories where there is a large noise because of the machines or we are, they are working now for example small scale industries are coming up by the roadside and we hear a lot of noise and still the people are working there. Definitely there is some going, there is some amount of hearing loss which will occur over a long term. Dermatological conditions in any factory wherever the skin is coming in contact or in regular abrasion or in regular with regular irritation these conditions will occur and psychological disorders are most important and amongst the most rising disorders today because of the extreme mental tension which our people are undergoing so for these uh, we have to take india has to take steps india has to promote uh, proper preventive, proper curative, proper um, rehabilitative measures so that both India and our people remain safe. Thank you for visiting uh, us today.